to honor Bob Dylan on the occasion of his 80th uh, birthday. Um, apparently, Joyce is among Dylan's many wide-ranging literary interests. Bob Dylan, like Joyce, defied and transformed artistic conventions. He adapted the tunes and phraseology of older folk songs. Uh, he developed an extensive academic following mu in music and in cultural studies. Somebody gave him a first edition of Ulysses and he didn't know how to make heads or hair off it, <laughs> apparently. So this is Woman on a Bed. Uh, he's also a prominent figure in the art world. I didn't know this. He started creating art in the 60s. Uh, uh, creating images of being on tour, passing emotions, documenting his encounters and observations <clears throat> while on the road. It is said that each of his works of art embodies the poetic and intimate qualities of his music. And I Bob Dylan won the prize for literature there recently and Joyce never did. Lay, lady, lay. Lay, lady, lay. Lay across my big brass bed. Lay, lady, lay. Lay across my big brass bed. for his night office. Better lower this lamp and try again in case he brings him home tomorrow. Today, I mean. No, no. Friday's an unlucky day. First, I want to do the place up. Some way the dust grows in it while I'm asleep. A nice plant for the middle of the table. I'd get that cheaper in. Where's this? I saw them not long ago. I love flowers. I'd love to have the whole place swimming in roses. God of heaven. There's nothing like nature. The wild mountains and the sea and the waves rushing and the beautiful country with fields of oat and wheat and all kinds of things and all the fine cattle going about that would do your heart good to see 
rivers and lakes and flowers, all sorts of shapes and smells and colours, springing up even out of the kitchen. Nature it is. As for them saying there's no God, I wouldn't give a snap of my two fingers for all their learning. Why don't they go and create something, I often ask Tim. Atheists, or whatever they call themselves. Go and wash the cobbles off themselves first. Then they go howling for the priest and they dying. And why? Why? Because they're afraid of hell on account of their bad conscience. Ah, yes. I know them well. Who was the first person in the universe? Before there was anybody who made it all. Who? Ah, that they don't know. And neither do I. So there you are. They might as well try and stop the sun from rising tomorrow. The sun shines for you today, he said. The day when we were lying among the rhododendrons on Hoth Head, in the grey tweed suit and his straw hat. The day I got him to propose to me, yes. First I gave him the bit of sea cake out of my mouth. And it was leapier like now, yes. Sixteen years ago. My God. After that long kiss, I near lost my breath. Yes. He said I was a flower of the mountain. Yes. So we are flowers all. A woman's body. Yes, that was one true thing he said in his life. And the sun shines for you today. Yes, and that was why I liked him. Because I saw he understood or felt what a woman is. And I knew I could always get round him. And I gave him all the pleasure I could, leading him on till he asked me to say yes. And I wouldn't answer first. When he looked out over the sea and sky, I was thinking of so many things he didn't know of. Mosey and Mr. Stanhope and Hester and Father and old Captain Groves and the sailors playing all birds fly and I say stoop and washing up dishes they called it on the pier and the sentry in front of the governor's house with the thing round his white helmet poor devil half roasted and the Spanish girls laughing in their shawls and their tall cones and Duke Street and the foul market all clucking outside Larby Sharon's and the big wheels of the carts and the bulls and the old castle thousands of years old yes and those handsome moors all in white and turbans like kings asking you to sit down in their little bit of a shop. And Rhonda with the old windows of the saddest. Glancing eyes, a lattice gate for her lover to kiss the iron. And the wine shops half open at night. And the night we miss the boat at Algeciras. Watchman going about, serene with his lamp. And oh, that awful, deep down torrent. And the sea, the sea, crimson sometimes, like fire. And the glorious sunset. And the fig trees in the Alameda Gardens, yes. And all the queer little streets. Pink and blue and yellow houses. And Gibraltar as a girl. 
Or I was the flower of the mountain. Yes. When I used to put the rose in my hair like the Andalusian girls use. Or shall I wear red? Yes. And how he kissed me under that Moorish wall. And I thought, well, as well him as another. And I asked him with my eyes to ask again. And he asked me, would I? Yes, to say yes, my mountain flower. And first, I put my arms around him, yes. And drew him down to me so he could feel my breath, so perfume, yes. And his heart was going like mad. And yes, I said, yes, I will. Yes. With Jerry Anderson, thank you. How much for the Ulysses? Uh, Ulysses? Uh, uh, two euro, second hand, but in excellent condition. Never read. <laughs> so you're, you're, you're going to read um, 
Ulysses. What business is it of yours, friend? Uh, um, I, I didn't mean anything by it. Didn't mean anything? I, 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 was, I was just passing the time. I guess that passes up manners from your cracker view of things. Um, well, well, sir, I, I apologize. If you don't want to accept that, um, I, I don't know what else I can do for you. Um, um, w will there be anything, something, something else? I don't know. Will there? <clears throat> is, is something wrong? With what? Um, with anything. Is that what you're asking me? Is there something wrong with anything? <clears throat> uh, will there be anything, anything else? You already asked me that. Well, um, I, I need to see about closing. <clears throat> see about closing? Uh, yes, sir. What time do you close? Um, uh, now? Uh, we, we, we close now. Now is not a time. What time do you close? Uh, well, generally around dark. At, at dark. You don't know what you're talking about, do you? Sir? I said you don't know what you're talking about. What time do you go to bed? Sir? You're a bit deaf, aren't you? I said, what time do you go to bed? Uh, well, um, uh, I, I'd say around 9.30, um, somewhere around 9.30. I could call back then. Why, why, why would you be coming back? We'll be, we'll be closed. You said that. Well, um, I need to close now. You live in the flat upstairs? Uh, yes, I do. You live there long? Uh, well, this was my wife's father's place um, uh, or originally. You married into it? But we lived in Exeter, England, uh, for many years, raised a family there in, in Exeter. Um, uh, we came out here about four years ago. You married into it? If that's the way you want to put it. Oh, you don't have some way to put it. That's the way it is. What's the most you ever lost in a coin toss? Sir? The most? You ever lost on a coin toss? I, I, I don't know. I, um, <clears throat> I couldn't say. Call it. Call it? Yes. F for what? Just call it. Well, we, we need to know what it is we're calling for here. I can't call it for you. You need to call it. Well, uh, well, uh, uh, I, did, I didn't put anything up. Yes, you did. You've been putting it up your whole life. You just didn't know it. Do you know what date is on this coin? No. It's a 1904 pound sterling, and it's been traveling over a hundred years to get here. And now it's here and it's either heads or tails. And you have to say, now call it. Look, I, I, I've got to know what I stand to win. Everything. Well, well, how's that? You stand to win everything. Now call it. All right. Heads, then. <laughs> well done. 
<laughs> don't, don't put it in your pocket. Sir? Don't put it in your pocket. It's your lucky pound. Where do you want me to put it? Anywhere not in your pocket. Or it'll get mixed up with the others and become just a coin. Which it is. Did you ever take two strikes and hit a home run? What do you what do you mean? You can never really tell on the phone. You might have been droopy looking. Do you like the way I look? I like. That's uh it's quite an aroma. I must have spilled some perfume. <laughs> Got some glasses? Is there over there? Oh, thank you. Uh, a lot or a little? It doesn't really matter either way. <laughs> Something wrong? No, no, nothing. Uh, mind if I sit down? Reading this big book, Ali says. Yes, I love the sound of the words. Yeah. What's it about? It's a love story. A boy meets girl, girl sleeps with somebody else, boy goes looking for love somewhere else. It's a pretty negligee. I got it in Paris. You staying long? Where? New York. No, I'll only be here for a few days. I'm going to South America. Well, now that's funny. So am I. You came over to flirt, didn't you? Well, I guess that was the general idea. As long as you're not grouchy about it. Oh, I'm never grouchy. Ruth. Your name? No, it's Nell. First initials are. That's my sister's suitcase. Uh, she's out. How are you going to South America? Oh, by sea. Are you going, really going? How? Oh, by turtle. I own a big turtle. I'm going to ride in his back. Well, someday I will. I'll go and drink a lot of coffee. I'm going to talk to all the parrots. Maybe we could go together, Billy. <laughs> what? I ran out of girls like you when I was 14. And the name is Jed, not Billy. Oh. What's his name? And where's my hat? Well, they belong to my sister's husband and he's out of town. I'm staying with her. All right, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sometimes I'm cynical. I just focus on the simple facts. I like you. Thanks. I'll probably dream about you. Don't be rash. What do you do in life? Um, your occupation, are, are you a salesman or a businessman? Um, you couldn't be a businessman, you're too young. 
I fly a fat cat to Chicago. No, I'm serious. So am I. A fat cat's a 60 passenger airplane. You're a pilot? That's right. Anything strange about that? Yes, uh, it's very strange. Did you fly bombers during the war? We didn't. You came home and lost step. You didn't have plans. Oh, I thought of becoming a financier, but... Uh, you, know, you didn't have a profession. You said, why not keep on flying? <laughs> yeah, something like that. There's money to be made in cargo on the islands. You crashed in the water. I've cracked up sometimes. <laughs> in the ocean in 46 on the way to Hawaii. But you weren't killed, only lost. No, wait, wait. It was uh, Lake Michigan. You were rescued and you came back. <laughs> Why get so excited about it? Oh, and uh, oh. <laughs> who are you, little sweetie? What age are you? It's getting real clubby in here. I'm the electrician. I came to fix a fuse. You go back to bed now. Go back to bed. This isn't your room. Go to sleep. yours? No, she doesn't belong to me. You're working here. Well, roll me over, so that's it. it. It's just for tonight. Well, sure, you're an heiress. Tomorrow you'll ride through your estate. I better leave before twins pop out of the closet. Well, it's, it's only a little after nine. They'll be home late. You are a gal with a lot of variations. <laughs> I haven't had earrings on for three years. And all through school, I, I never had a dress to wear. If I liked a boy, my parents wouldn't let me. A month ago, I came here from a bus from Oregon. At night, we'd pass all these big trucks with lights on them all over them, like, like Christmas trees. And then I was here, I walked down the street, looking to all these beautiful stores. Eddie calls it window wishing. Then I got this job tonight and this was hanging up and the earrings and I couldn't help it. I was gonna put them back, you know, I've never been, I've never been in a hotel before. Sorry, I made fun of you. Things will be better. They even up. Bad breaks, good breaks. Eddie says that too. Eddie? My uncle. I live with him. He works in the elevator. <laughs> Nervous little guy. <laughs> yeah. He's nice sometimes. Sometimes? He other times, like my parents, um, he makes me remember them. He doesn't care about what people really want. Um, I know what I mean. You mean he, uh, he hasn't got an understanding heart. Yeah, that's it exactly. I don't feel guilty. No. I have nothing to feel guilty about. So what? Yes, 
Yes, I'm in bed. Yes, still in bed. And yes, I let the day pass by without even saying so much as hello to it, without doing a single thing. No logins, no answering calls, no replies to emails, no replies at all. And no posting on social media, because today I have nothing to say. And even if I do, if I do have something to say, it's mine. I don't want to tell everyone or anyone at all. Why should I? I don't want to share. I don't want to post my feelings to the world to receive likes or hearts or kisses. <laughs> Not today. There is no emoji that will alter how I feel. No positive platitude or meme from the millions of images of happy clappy calm, a mountain or a tree or a picture of the sea that will embrace me. No, today is mine for me. And I will not feel guilty. Why should I? For not engaging, for not wanting to speak, for not needing to tell everyone how I feel, where I am, what I ate, where I'm going. No, I'm not going anywhere today. I will not be busy. I have unbusied myself. A holiday from busy, just for me. And what is good about being busy? And why must we always have to be busy? I'm flat out, snowed under. I'd love to, if I can. Let me see, up to my eyes, down to the wire, going forward. Headlines, bullet points, focal points, FaceTime, memos, crosstalk, crosshairs. Deadlines. What is the rush? What are we racing to? It's always on, on to the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing. One continuous rush. One moment pushing up against the next, moment against moment until... No! There is no until. No! There is only rush, push, race. Rush, push, race. Pushing past so fast and at such a pace. But there is no first place in the race. <sighs> this time is mine. I claim my time. I must reclaim my time. This time must be mine. I will not just chase the next and the next and the next like a hamster on a wheel or carrot to the donkey, always just out of reach to me. I need time to say stop. Let me see what is around. What I've done Remembered the things, things that are gone and past. I went by them so fast. Take time to recover. Take time to say to myself, I refuse to be pushed refuse to do what's expected of me. I refuse to move on. I refuse to see what's next and next and next. So, I'm going to lay here under the covers for a while until I'm ready. Lazy. Yes, lazy. I will be lazy.
the happiest of the seven dwarves, <laughs> apart from maybe Dopey. And yes, perhaps sometimes it would be better to be Dopey. But I now know too much to be that. So I will be sloth, slothful, one of the seven deadly sins. Can't think why. It seems to me that sloth is harmless, if you think about it. And isn't what is best in the end doing no harm? Do nothing. Do no harm. I could have chosen envy or wrath, but I choose sloth. And for that, I think I deserve a prize. A peace prize, in fact, exactly for staying in bed. Me staying in bed is actually making sure that no harm comes to someone. Someone in particular. By me staying here, undercover, I'm not going out and doing what I could be doing to someone. Not someone. Him. I could be doing harm to him. No. Just him. A hair. That's where it started. A hair. One single long hair. One single long auburn hair on the shoulder of his jacket. How did that get there? <laughs> of course I said nothing. Tell myself I could be jumping to the wrong conclusion. It could be anything. Anyone's hair picked up from anywhere, right? No. No, I knew. I knew it was hers. And I knew how it got there. <sighs> I could rage scream, cause a scene. I could fight and kick and demand him to explain. But there was no more to explain. All I needed to know was right there in my hand. In that single long auburn strand picked from the shoulder of his jacket. It told me a whole story of busy lives, of time at a pace, of the rush to move from moment to moment without stopping to see where we were, in what place. And to tell me too that no matter how I behaved or raged and shouted, ranted and raved, that I, I didn't see that he had moved on. He had moved on. Moved on to the next. So, I'm going to stay here undercover for a while until I'm ready. Until I feel fit to return to the world. This time on my own. And that's it.
I'll wait till I'm ready to send out a text, a call to a friend. Till I'm ready for next. Hey. Hi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Shit, how long are you here? Um, did you uh, change your hair? What? Um, yeah, like the other week, I just, I just got a few highlights. You like them? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> Did you get caught in traffic? No, no, it's that fucking O'Malley case. They just, they just keep expecting me to drop everything in the last minute. Sorry, you don't need to hear this. What was the last week? I'm sorry, Jerry, it's just work. They just keep piling the shit on, you know? I just, it's all last minute and I'm sorry. Like, I just, I can't stop saying sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, it's, it, it's all right. I just, I, I didn't think you were gonna come. Ah, here. But look, I just, I was, I feel like it's it, you know? Sitting here, right? Yeah. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're, it's not fair. It won't happen again. You know, I would have texted. Yeah. And I can't call you. Cause... Look, you know, like the kids. <laughs> Ooh, can we not bring them up, please? But look, what, what, what would they say if they knew you were ringing me? I'm hardly going to ring you at home now, am I? Oh, but there'd be a record of it, though, on the phone. And, uh... How are we going to explain that to John? Right, fair enough. Well, that's a bit of a passion killer. <laughs> I've only got 20 minutes. Yeah. That's not long boiled. You wouldn't mind. Yeah. Would you? <laughs> you want a cup of tea? Yeah, yeah please. Uh, I'm sorry, no, but should I be offended or? <laughs> no, I, I just, I, I'd really love a, a cup of tea. Please. Is it hair? No, no, hell no. Look, I just, just please. Okay. This is there's a couple of biscuits there if you No, no, look, I'm okay. I'm not hungry. I, I had something. Cup of tea. Um, I actually don't know how you take it. <laughs> oh, uh, milk, no sugar. Do you do you want to be here? Yes. Sorry, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. What's going on with you today? You're just really don't, like don't stop. 
Just stop talking, will you? Ah, here now, excuse me? Just, you, you sound so like her. What, you're only noticing that now? Well, Our own mother couldn't fucking tell us apart. Well, I mean, you, you don't look anything like her. No, like on the phone? Even our boyfriends would get us mixed up. Like I'd sometimes actually, if someone was ringing for Di, I'd pretend I was her. And yeah, she did the same. Jesus, when I think of it now. Did they never figure it out? No. Did you do that to me? No. No. No, it was before you two started going out. No, but I wouldn't have done that to you. Jen, what are we doing? It's not. And I just I look, I don't know if I, 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 I don't know if I, I can. It, you. Your voice, it's like it's coming from the grave. Okay, I won't speak. I'll start again. I'll just come back in, say nothing. Then we can just fucking get on with our day. Yeah? No, no. Then uh, yeah, no, I, I can't. I can't do this anymore. Cherry. What, where, what are you doing? I'm not doing this. best way out is through that what you need is what you're afraid of at the end of the night I see the blue a light in the distance on a country road and when you're up you're up you're soaring up and when you're down Catching all the time in the desert with the porcupines. Where you've been chasing a star and calling a name, hoping someone will answer to the same. Guided by a south star and a movement ephemeral you turn and face away from where you are there are no words for this with the slanting sun on your face and you faced into an abyss and you're up you're up you're soaring up and when you're down I said no. Uh, I heard a yes pretending to be a no. Uh-oh. Hashtag me too.
<laughs> Come here. We need to talk. Oh, talk. I can multitask, rare in my agenda, but just another thing for you to love about me. Oh, well, I do love that about you, but we need to talk. I hate that scary fucking tone. Mm. We need to stop. Stop what? Oh, don't play dumb. No, no more of this foolishness. Declan. No. Oh, laying down the law, are you? <laughs> Someone has to. Well, it's not your decision. Exactly. It's our decision. A couple makes decisions together. Except we aren't a couple. Have we not been seeing each other for the past year? We have sex. We get together to have sex. Saying we just have sex is like saying Bono just sings to exercise his vocal cords. You sound like a fucking idiot. Couples try new restaurants they go to movies they they visit italy with friends we we do none of that because you always say no and why is that because we aren't a couple now you're getting it don't do this Maeve. please it's time no it's it's not fucking time to stop it's, it's time to keep going you stop don't make this any fucking harder than it has to be i'm i'm right about this can, can you fucking stop with your condescending bullshit? Can you do that for fuck's sake? Can you do that? You know, you'll understand in about 30 years, give or take a few. I'll be dead by then, off to my re eternal reward. Oh, here we go. Yeah, you're playing the age card again. Does not get old. Pardon the pun. <laughs> I make you happy. I, I know I make you happy. Oh, happier than I ever thought possible. Then stop your fucking bullshit. Come here. Lay down. I'm not letting you take advantage of me in my weakest moment. This doesn't make sense. Well, let me see if I can say it in a way that you can hear me this time don't i always listen to every word that comes out of your mouth even when you're shy talking like now well you listen but you don't always hear oh god remember what a mess i was when we first met and then oh you came along all six foot five of you just pure deliciousness you're saying stuff i want to hear oh gosh those big blue eyes just saw me me just me and your laugh when you laugh everything bad disappears i'm gonna start laughing now make that shy come out of your mouth disappear how many times have i said how beautiful your hands are what beautiful hands you have the hands of an artist yeah mm -hmm. and the way you touch me <laughs> exactly see why aren't you thinking about that you know and Instead of thinking about all this crazy shit about stopping the best thing that ever happened to either of us. Well, you made me feel like anything was possible. Anything is fucking possible. Like us. Yeah, you loved me and you petted me and soothed me and teased me. And you talked to me whenever I wanted, what about whatever I wanted, as long as I wanted. You can't talk. There's no denying that. When I didn't want to talk, you you would hold me and wrap me up in your arms. You were so present. You were with me. I'm still with you. I know, but I'm 60 and you're 30. My age is only a fucking number. Age is just a number when you're 30. The sweetest part of life is still waiting for you. No, the, the sweetest part of life is here right now. Mm. You need to build a life. Don't give, me a, don't give me a heart attack. You need a proper wife, children. I, I, I could kill you, yeah. I'd have grounds yeah, driven to insanity. <laughs> oh, God. You know the best 
like when you go to a party and it's nothing but laughter and old friends and the energy keeps building and then it you know starts to go the other way and there's nothing so sad as a party where a few people are clinging to an evening that's ended but only they don't know it oh well that's what you're saving me from is it staying too long at the party we need to do this now when it feels good we can skip all the disappointment and sorrow and blame and regret we can just remember how much we loved each other how deeply we loved i'm begging you we don't have a future not a real future I'm looking at the end and you're still, you know, at the beginning, your whole life is ahead of you. Endings are different. You realize your life has a bookend. <sighs> you can see it if you squint. You can't see the end because it's too far away, but the end can see me. Don't, don't make me do this. Give me the gift of remembering me now, still beautiful and still capable of making you want me. Still me, the me you see right here, right now. I'm begging you, stop fighting me because you'll wear me down. You have that power. Give me this ending. What a time we've had, huh? So much laughter. About nothing. <laughs> About everything. Let me tell you what's ahead for you. <laughs> we have it all mapped out, do you? You need to trust me, I'm right about this. That's all you say. First, you'll find an amazing woman. I, could, could you give me a fucking a moment to, to mourn you? No. Six months, no more. Any more than that, then you're just being dramatic and don't go to the pub and get blind drunk. You'll just drag it out. God, you're, you're, you're mad thing. Yes, I know. It's a character flaw I hate. I'm, I'm hoping to outgrow it, but the clock is ticking. I'm not hopeful. She'll be your age. She'll make you laugh. You know, I've got a brilliant idea then. Since you've got it all mapped out, you know, neat, nice and tidy. Now, maybe you could be the granny and you, you could come look after things and me and the missus go away for the weekend. Thanks. That's very tempting. You'll see yourself in her eyes. The incredible man that you are. Because of you. Well, I'll take a little bit of credit. You'll be breathless with love for her and you'll build a life together. Proper couple. Exactly. And you'll go to the cinema. Yeah, and try new restaurants. Go to Italy with friends. Yeah, life, a full, rich, happy life. I want that for you. I want that too. I know. I know, my love. And you shall have it. And you shall have it. Oh, honey. Thinking about that song. The last photograph. I'm thinking about a verse long ago. We used to sing that song. It was a person I used to know in Galway. When I was living with my grandmother, it was a young boy I used to know. 
a Michael Fury. He used to sing that song. He was very delicate. I can see him so plainly. Such eyes as he had, oh, big dark eyes and an expression in them, an expression. I used to go out walking with them when I was in Galway. He's dead. He died when he was only 17. Isn't it a terrible thing to die so young as that? He was in the gas works. Oh, I was great with him at the time. I think he died for me. It was in the winter, about the beginning of the winter. I was leaving my grandmother's house to go up to the convent in Dublin. He was ill at the time in his lodgings in Galway. He wouldn't be let out. And his people in Uthard were in too. He was in decline. They said something like that. I never knew rightly. Poor fellow. He was very fond of me. Oh, but he was such a gentle boy. We used to go out walking together, you know, Gabriel, the way they do in the country. He was going to study singing only for his health. He had a very good voice. Poor Michael Fury. And when it came time for me to leave Galway and go up to the convent, he was much worse. And I wouldn't be let see him. So I wrote him a letter saying I was going up to Dublin, would be back in the summer, hoping he'd be better by then. Then the night before I left, I was in my grandmother's house in Nuns Island, packing up, and I heard gravel thrown up against the window. The window was so wet. I, I couldn't see out, so I ran down the stairs as I was and slipped out the back into the garden. And there was the poor fellow at the end of the garden, shivering. I implored him at once to go home, told him he'd get his death in the rain. But he said he did not want to live. And it was in his eyes as well, as well. Yes, he went home. And after I was only a week in the convent, he died. I was buried in Uttarard where his people came from. Oh, the day I heard that, that he was dead.
with no work to be done under that Watching.